your stuff is so wild. Like it's so avant-garde, so strange. It's like, how do you know something works and how do you know you're like, that's it? I mean, I have to find it funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to find or be like fixated on the idea in a sincere way. Like yeah. it can't be kind of reverse engineered. You know, it's like it has to be something that I genuinely find funny. But then it also has to have this kind of like ring of like, and this feels so pretentious, but like for lack of a less pretentious word, poetry. What I'm Great. getting is you're a poet. <laughs> no, no, no. Your words. I'm gonna echo back what I'm hearing. No, this is the lead clip. I'm gonna, just... I'm gonna echo back what I'm hearing. I'm a poet. I'm a singer. I'm a poet. I'm an artist. <laughs> but I'm also a man. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what I'm With hearing. Needs. <laughs> When I was first introduced to you personally, it was because you and I both worked on Jack the Novak's show. Yes. I was like behind the scenes a little bit early on and then you directed the show beautifully. Thank you. Get on your knees. And it's like beautifully directed. And <laughs> Jacqueline, I remember being like, her way of describing you is, mm -hmm. John is very serious about craft. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't tell. You couldn't tell. So I love your special. One of my favorite parts of the special is the multiple times that you put a spotlight <laughs> on your parents. One of the times you say, uh, uh, I love anal or something. Yeah. And then you go hard spotlight on your parents. <laughs> uh, yeah. How much do they know and how much don't they know? They, I mean, there was like this beautiful moment in 2015, maybe 2016, when I did that to them for the first time. <laughs> and they had no idea what was This beautiful coming. moment? It, they were truly like, I knew where their tickets were. It was at Joe's Pub. And we like, and we had the most like clean shaft of white light oh on gosh. them. And they were totally shocked. And it was like the most transcendent moment of my life. <laughs> um... And they must love your comedy then. They do. Okay. They do. It's really, really cool. It's really sweet. My, you know, my parents were ministers. Yes. And Presbyterian ministers. And and then I kept doing that to them, like like once a year, like at the bell house and stuff. And so they knew it was coming. But I do think just like the cameras, the energy in the crowd, it being a tape being like their response, like them hunching over is like completely genuine you know and i think it was a thrill for them i would like to think it was oh it might also be considered elder abuse in some circles but i they love it did you come up presbyterian yeah i went to presbyterian church every sunday till i was 18 years old i went to this place and did like youth conferences and i sang the, i sang the songs yeah that was like the most meaningful thing for me and by meaningful i just mean i loved singing Aww. like it wasn't like the only thing I remember from church. That's how they get you, by the way. Literally. I'm, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's like sensual pleasures like singing. But I like, I stood next to my mom and she like harmonized. She yeah. was such an incredible like, <clears throat> alto, alto, alto. And, um, and that honestly is why I like music. It's like from church. You and Beyonce. <laughs> yes. Well, we have that in common. Oh, and also your Instagram handle. <laughs> yes. Beyonce. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's but like Houston is similar to Nashville. Is it? Yeah, I do feel actually a kinship with Beyonce, and like there is, there's like it's like a, it's kind. Sorry to people who love Houston and Nashville, but I they're kind of like soulless cities. Oh wow! You know, shots fired. Yeah, sorry. In two cities. Like there, I mean, there are obviously great things about both, but like they're just a little, they're a little like corporate. Yeah, and I feel like. That's in me and Beyonce, like like high achieving, like like type A. That's that's in me and Beyonce. Yeah. People always say that about you and Beyonce. <laughs> always say that. But I feel like Beyonce and I are both Tracy Flicks. Oh, you interesting. Know? Like I really I really you're, and do. you're looking at another one. Uh, uh, absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. And you have on your Instagram, you have this video of you on local national Nashville <laughs> television and being asked about sex when you were like, I don't know, 14, 14. 15. Yeah, yeah. And, and your answer 
14 year old John Early is so earnest. And when I watch that, I'm like, that's the kid you're making fun of now yeah. on stage. Yes, exactly. How much are you doing an impression like of that kid? I mean, he's like the reason that video is so funny and it was also like literally still so painful for me to watch, even though I put it online, you know, <laughs> it's like it is I seeing myself trying to be such like a good little student. You yeah. Know, and a, a good little boy is like so heartbreaking. That's to the me. Tracy Fleck. Yeah. yeah. And I and I think that so much of the thing I'm doing on stage someone argue too much but like some like so much thing especially in the special is and especially with my parents yeah and and being like kind of like you yeah know, yeah Fuck you, you know yeah, like yeah. being a little angry adolescent like it is this very delayed rebellion yeah because i mean there's there's video proof in that in that news clip it's like that i was like i was yeah. not i i was completely buttoned up and you know yeah, so was I. I was just full rule follower, student yeah. government. I mean, I remember telling, like, when my friends would, like, want to, like, try drinking. I'd be like, we don't need that. <laughs> I'd be like, we love, we love pop culture. We love, watching, <laughs> we love watching movies. Like, I don't need that. Like, I, it was like, you know, and... and Thank God in some ways, but I'm also Thank God like, for you. Yeah. God is the operative word. <laughs> Thank you for clearly I keep bringing it back. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. In some ways it's like you're so earnest as a kid and we have video proof of it. <laughs> and then at a certain point, was there an inflection point where you're like, I'm going fully ironic and I'm going the other way with it? Definitely. I mean, that's once I started doing comedy it yeah. just was this opportunity to kind of correct the course a little bit yeah um but i have to say like the reason why this this special is particularly special to me i think it is because there was like finally a synthesis of like the incredibly earnest part of me yeah yeah and then the like and then the little bitch you <laughs> yeah, know the little who, punk the little punk who needs to yeah yeah and and that is that it, and a it, and a singer, yeah, which beautiful is the singer, earnest part of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The song choices help kind of cut through that, but yeah. like the singing itself is is earnest, and it is it is just about wanting people to have a good time or wanting to move people in some way, you know. And like I've kind of I've never filmed it because I was embarrassed by that desire. It's this is a weird thing to say about a comedy special. I feel good afterwards. <laughs> Totally. I mean, if that's the goal of also ending with I feel love. It's yeah. Like, just like I wanted people to feel like they were like leaving a party or, yeah. or like the party was still going on, you know, it and and that's also why Bette Midler and Sandra Bernhardt are like such they're like my primary live performance influences is because of their relationship to music yes. especially and like they they don't do comedy songs they just kind of like they'll be wild and hilarious and then they just click into a totally sincere song which is kind of old school your stand-up like my stand-up is very in a certain way straightforward in the sense that i go to clubs i try out 10 jokes mm -hmm. and i sandwich them in between five minutes that work at the front, five minutes that work in the back, mm -hmm. and then eventually I have new jokes. Yeah. And then I <laughs> formulate those jokes into a thing. Yeah, Your stuff is so wild. Like it's <laughs> so avant-garde, so strange. It's like, how do you know something works and how do you know you're like, that's it? Well, you know, I guess in the kind of traditional sense, like I do, like I did go on tour before this and I it was very clear very quickly what worked and what didn't based on people's responses but i also think just internally there does have to be a feeling of like i mean i have to find it funny yeah <laughs> you know i have to find or be like fixated on the idea in a sincere way like yeah. it can't be kind of reverse engineer you know it's like it has to be something that i genuinely find funny. but then it also has to have this kind of like ring of like and this feels so pretentious but like for lack of a less pretentious word, poetry. Like a little bit of like oh. a... <laughs> oh. Who are you looking at? 
Look at the wall. <laughs> um, but like, I just, it did have a kind of like, like I was trying to sincerely underneath the silliness say something, communicate a kind of like despair about the state of the world, knowing that it was maybe a little abstract, yeah. but there was like something very r sincere underneath it and feeling that people were, that I didn't have to explain it, that yeah. I could just kind of like drop it and people understood what was underneath it and that part of the joy of it and what was funny was that it was abstract and I was just going like, Tch. yeah, you know, like that's, it's very vague what I'm saying, but it, that was what I'm great. getting is you're a poet. <laughs> no, no, no. Your words. I'm going to echo back what I'm hearing. No, this is the lead clip. I'm going to I'm going to echo back what I'm hearing. I'm a poet. I'm a singer, I'm a poet, I'm an artist. <laughs> but I'm also a man. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what I'm With hearing. Needs. <laughs> um. That was in my sexual prime in Brooklyn in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of the lines from the show that I love. I wasted my sexual yes. pride here. It's so real. It's absurd. It's so incredible. That's a very real. confessional moment in the special, I yeah. think. Because it's like a thrown away ironic line, but like there is a sense under it that like, oh yeah, he probably feels that way a little bit. Oh, well, it's it's literally how I feel when when I walk onto the stage. I'm like, what did I do? I, I, <laughs> I'm looking out and I'm like and I'm like and I have fans like people like me and I like didn't have oh my sex gosh. like oh my god that's so funny yeah you're still in your sexual prime thank you you're young thank guy you. you're young looking good looking guy yeah I thank you but don't do that thing that you just <laughs> did that's okay. that's not sort of codifying Got it. it do you know what I mean by that's that what, yeah yeah so it's let's pushing people away. so let's do it again <laughs> we'll do it again so you're a sex you're a sexy young man thank you <laughs> that's one of the things about <laughs> that's one of the things about when you and i were in that video together is <laughs> just want to get it on record you're just a deeply hilarious person when you and kate were working on your sketch show which is nominated for an emmy oh Wait, thank did you did we get that did we get that <laughs> we got it <clears throat> okay um that must have felt good right it was insane. It's so crazy. I can't believe it. That special is a riot. But Thanks. when you're working with Kate, like, do you break each other? Yeah. To a point where it's like, come on, we got to make our day. We got to get these things yes. filmed. And I'm worse about it than Kate. Like, she is really, like, it's part of her genius. Or it's, like, part of what helps her keep going. I mean, she's just, like, she's so committed and it's so real. Yeah. And like in order to achieve that level of realism, I feel like you have to fully do it. Whereas I'm like always on the edge of like laughing. So you're so you you're a poet, she's a genius. <laughs> and then I can say that without any embarrassment. She's a genius. And she is. Um but she yeah, is. I laughs I really have trouble. I really it's it's impossible with her. What are you gonna do like this wasn't one of our questions, but it's like, what are you going to... I want to see more sh of shows, like the special. Are you going to tour with more of this? Yes. I mean, I that was like... That was the thing. It's is like touring that show. And I wonder... I mean, you tour all the time. Yeah. But like, I really barely do it. And like, I was like so maudlin after those shows. I would like go home and like call Kate or something, you know, and, and I would be like bursting into tears i was Aww. like this is like the most incredible experience i've ever had in my life Aww. i was like and i'm sure i'll lose that you know <laughs> as you go on but like but i really was like this is this is heaven if no one ever wants to put me in anything yeah like again like i would be so happy doing this this is like a dream so i i really really would. and i feel like i figured something out with the music and the comedy and like integrating them more and i, I want to keep going with that yeah because i think like I get that because I feel like you're giving people a completely original performance that isn't, it's like how you felt about Ben Midler. Thank you. That's the goal. <laughs> I think it's, I think they are experiencing that. I, think, I hope. I think they're like, we just saw, sometimes Jenny, my wife will say this to me. She'll go, she'll listen to the audio recording of like me doing shows in DC and she'll go, you know, you shouldn't, 
make so many jokes at your own expense that you're working out new material because it is a special experience for the audience. So if you start to say that, it might take a little bit away. Yeah. And the fact that you are giving it your heart. Yeah. They're jokes that might, the, the show that you're doing is unlike any other performance night ever again. And that, yeah, yeah. The, the couple hundred people in that room are the only people who will experience that. That's a really good point. Yeah, I there is I I'm the same way though. I'm like I have to preface, let people know like it's messy or an improv process or so you know and like but it is it's a re it's like when you see so with after shows over and you see someone and they're like that was so great and you're like it wasn't like last night was incredible. Yes, you're like last night like was like the audience was insane and it's like right. fuck you I bought tickets to right. your show totally. <laughs> yeah, when you and Kate came to. Uh, the old man in the pool and came backstage. I was so uh, moved by it. And, but I was also like, I was nervous that you're in the audience. Cause oh I'm just like, God. I have that thing of like when people I admire in the audience, I, just, I, 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 I think about it the whole time. I know it's, I completely understand and I don't know what anyone's supposed to do. <laughs> Cause yeah. it's like, you want people to come and then you're like, great. Now I'm right. Now paralyzed. I'm performing. Yeah. yeah. For this person who I admire so much. It was um, so cool seeing you at Lincoln center. Oh, thanks when you sing britney mm -hmm. in the special yeah you make the joke you go shout out any britney song and then you <laughs> yeah. and then you go i you know like i heard uh, album three track three yeah it's like such a joyous thing and then you sing album three track three britney do you know the other songs do you know 10 know do you know 10 singles. britney songs yes because she has 10 singles at least you know like I was never like an album Britney stan, I but I was very into her as a phenomenon, you know, and and so I was very, I you know, I was I was I subscribed to Entertainment Weekly, yeah, like as a middle schooler, like that was my idea. I asked my parents, so I was oh, very wow. like again, this is the Tracy flick. I like knew the, <laughs> the box office. I was uh, like, Oof. I was like, Wild Wild West did not do that. like, <laughs> like you know. I knew the letter score that they gave every movie. Oh my you know? gosh. Do people ever, when you were touring it, because obviously you got the rights to that Britney song. Yeah. When you were touring, did you ever do any of the other songs? No, I only, because we only prepared Overprotected. Oh, you did? Well, so with that band, we've done probably over the years, like eight Britney covers, you know, but none that we would be ready to just do on a moment's notice we yeah. have to really rehearse and like so overprotected was the choice i had gotten the rights and that was what we were going with and the joke was just going to be i will stand here until someone organically <laughs> suggests That's overprotected so funny. and sometimes it really like it it never happened quickly <laughs> So it only like, it, but sometimes it really just like would not happen, <laughs> and like, and I would have to like coerce it in other <laughs> weird ways, like, which was always so fun and fun once people understood what what the joke was. So we were in Taylor's video. Yes, you and I have this thing in common, which is not only were we in the video, we get asked about it. I think yeah, in every interview, well, in every family function now. <sighs> It's a lot because yeah. we're 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 a very small part, truly, of of a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. Um, how do you, what's it's hard? You, it's hard. It's hard for us. <laughs> it's been hard. <clears throat> how do you? How did she know you? Did she know you from search party or, or like how? Or is that, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then she did. She just text you via Jack Antonoff. Yeah. Who I of course know through Jacqueline. Yeah. Um, and you. Um, but like, yeah, just got a text from Taylor Swift. Yeah, same, <laughs> like, same. As I was like on my back after like a surgery, and I was like, "This is crazy." <laughs> and of course, like the apps, the responsible thing to do would have to say would have been to say no because of my back. But I was like, I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is how, for me, this is how bizarre that uh, shooting that video was. I texted you uh -huh. and I said, just like, hey, all right. Cause that was, you know, I knew like it was a secret. Right. And I don't know who knew they were involved and who didn't. Yes. And so yes. I didn't, I think I knew. Yeah. I didn't want to ask anybody. Yeah. 
because you don't want to bother these people who are all like major moguls. And yeah. So you just go, I'll show up on the day. Yeah. <laughs> they texted you like, hey, um, are you doing anything secret like uh-huh. July 19th or whatever? <laughs> what? yeah. And you're like... <laughs> You're like, uh, I might be, yes, you know, (laughs) and it was just like very cryptic. I know it was so top secret. That was the coolest part about it was like getting there and the call sheet said something different. Yes. You know, it was like for a different, a different Different, video, like Taylor's version or something, even though it was actually the new single. Yes. And, uh, that was really cool. I I thought what was really cool on set was because she directed it was first of all the script was really funny i thought i know immediately i was like oh this is hilarious and then second of all i was like she's really good at directing us and also uh the background actors i know like just and like so calm and easy yeah breezy it was like so nice i feel comfortable talking about it with you here because we were it's a thing that we share but like i try to avoid it in like every interview <laughs> Because yeah. it could be cut up and decontextualized. Yes, and I'm just like, yes. ah. Well, I didn't. Yeah, I, I've already experienced that where I like told a story on a podcast on Mike. Uh, no, sorry. You're Mike. Yes, on Moshe Mike. and Natasha's <laughs> podcast. And where they were asking me about it. And I told this story, which I think is so funny, which is like where I where the joke. I, I'm trying to talk about my own just like deeply embarrassing moment where she was talking to me about like. I think because I asked her, I was like, are you releasing this as a single? Like, I, or, or, I was like, is this the lead single? I think is what I said. And she was like, well, you know, the music industry's changed a lot. They don't really do, like, lead singles anymore. They kind of, like, post, like, Beyonce dropping that album with all the videos at the same time. It's like kind of like you, like, do it all at once now or you do a bunch of things at once, you know. And I, she's telling me this. And I found myself going, I was like, I was like, we got to get back to that time. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I missed that. And I was, I meant it completely. Of course. I, I really was like, I miss, like I'm talking about the Britney, like the Entertainment Weekly of it all. Like I miss witnessing the, the narrative, the press narrative, the drama of yeah. here's the first single, first video. And then a few months later, you get the next one. Like, I, and then, and then it's sustained. Yeah. You get like a year of like four videos. Yeah. And it's just so much easier to kind of, take in instead of like everything at once you know whatever so but i meant it and i was like i was like i was like make this the first <laughs> i was like that's genius i was like that's genius and then i realized i was like i'm talking about the video that i'm in yeah like it's so transparent like it it looks like i'm just like yeah make this one the first thing oh like gosh. like because i'm in the video like it like, and i was like Oh, no. Like, I I felt so embarrassed afterward. I mean, she probably didn't think I was doing that, but I was, like, mortified. But then, like, I told this story, and this will happen again, but I told this story on their podcast, and then because people are... This is what I didn't realize. It's like like there's an army of people... Full-time job. It's either actually their full-time job or it's fans who are unpaid. Yeah, Yeah. unpaid full-time job. And are just like combing through everything that's said by anyone ever yeah and they're looking for any mention of taylor and they're like you know and then there were literally multiple articles that are like john early convinces taylor swift to make no anti-hero that's first what single it, no way and i was like no way I'm it said john die. early convinces her yes like as if it was my it was oh, john early's God. idea what a nightmare and i was like she's gonna see that or her press people are gonna see that and be like that asshole like going around telling people it was my idea to make the lead single which it's of course was not the point of the story the point of the story is that i was like did you reach out and say hey just so you know this thing i didn't yeah i didn't i thought it was best to stay out of (laughs) (laughs) so this is called the slow round so do you have a nickname from your life that was really good or really bad well, the good one is Bajonce, which is <laughs> yeah. No, you know. uh, the bad one is one that I in sixth grade I tried to tell everyone to call me Bo because my middle name is Bowman. That was I'm sorry. That was in sixth grade. Sixth grade, I was like, call me Bo, and not one person. <laughs> it never caught. Uh, <laughs> so that that was bad. Call me Bo. <laughs> Nothing. It's just Bo. 
Because it's it your like, middle name? Yeah. B-E-A-U? B-O. B-O? Yeah. <laughs> John Bo Early. Does anyone call John Bo? John Bo. I like, I love actually Johnny. I love when people call me mm. Johnny. It's like, it's so sweet to me. Um, can you think of a time where you were so scared you ran away? <laughs> oh my God. Um, literally, yeah. I remember when I like, when I like, <laughs> came out or sort of my friend the first person i came out to was like my best friend in middle school and she was like sh i wasn't coming out to her she was like we were like talking and i thought i was being coded like i was like i was like because i wasn't ready at all i had no intention and i was like but i this is i thought this was coded so i was like you know when you've told someone something like your whole life <laughs> I was like, but then you realize that's not true. And she was like, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, but then you real, I'm like, you realize it's not true. And then you have to tell them, but you're worried because they think the original thing. And it's, and, and, and I literally was like, and she was like, yeah. And she was like, are you, and I, and then I literally went, like Roadrunner, oh I fully god. was like, <laughs> and I like oh ran my god to the bathroom, like at our school. We were at school, and I like ran and I like closed myself in the bathroom, and then like I was like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm wet. and she was like banging on the door, and then I finally like, got out. I was like, la 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 la, and like called my parents to come pick me up, and I was like, la, 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 la. like oh my god, and then they came and picked me up, and I like, and she was like laughing, I was like, it's okay, it's okay, but I like physically ran. It's like what she was expecting you to say was something so short. Yeah, 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 totally. So then after you ran away into the bathroom, eventually you probably came out. A couple days later, we like, I, you know, had to go back to school. You guys remember? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and it was just like... <laughs> You know, she was, she was like, it was like, she was like, hi, you know, it was like, it was like, it had happened without me meaning to. And then after that, did you come out to your parents? Not for like six years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a long time. They knew though. I right. Mean, they right. knew, I knew that they knew it was hell. And I was like, <laughs> and like, but then I just like, you know, I did a little, well, I guess I did it in person with my mom when she like visited me in, in at college. But and with such, I was, it was, I was like glaring as I did it because oh I like God. refused to make it I a was moment. Glaring as I did it. I totally know what you mean of like, of where you refuse somehow. There's something in you that's like, I'm not going to let you have this. Like the Hallmark version. I'm not doing it. Right. I'm not yeah. going to do the Hallmark version. I'm not going to let you have like a narrative in your head. Yes. And that's when John... <laughs> sat on the bed yeah, and he yeah. took my hand <laughs> and he said there's something i have to tell yeah. you no i was like truly and then what was her reaction she was really hilarious about it really great like i'm, I'm very lucky you know she was like i was like you know how i procrastinate I, like mad at her for no reason <laughs> Like, she was like, you know how yeah. I procrastinate? I was like, you know how I procrastinate on like papers? Oh my God. And That's she was like, so yeah. Funny. And I was like, well, I do it with like life stuff too. Oh my God. And I, and she was like, yeah. And I was like, and no, and, and, and then she said something kind of genius and I'll never remember, but it was like, it was like, does this have something? Oh no. It was like, does this have something to do with you answering the door to like my, like, uncle from west virginia wearing your sister your sister's communion dress like first communion dress or something and i was like yes it was genius oh my gosh yeah when I, <clears throat> one of my i don't know one of my first jokes in college when i started doing stand-up was after a friend of mine my like my best friend in college came out to me and and it, and it was um he said i'm gay and i said i know he said i'm in the closet and i go yeah but the closet has an sync poster on it <laughs> literally did it i mean I, it, might as, is, it might as well yeah yeah, yeah yeah i mean it was just like long it was long overdue that's really funny yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh baptismal gown baptismal Sorry, I gown just, i just want to make sure i'm representing her work 
on this podcast. Do you want to pick it up? Nope. No. No. Okay. Moving on. Um, did you? Did your life go the way you thought it would? I mean, in some ways, yes. Like I definitely, I was hoping for the kind of like the Bette Midler thing. <laughs> Not, I, I, I want to be absolutely clear, and please leave this in, Mike. Sure. That like the. Like when I'm talking about Bette Miller, I am in no way con- like compare. Like I'm not trying to say like I have the voice, okay, or you know whatever, or the cultural impact. Someone argue it's impossible to even have that cultural impact anymore with the fracturing of media. Um, but I just I did want to be like performing in New York. You're saying you. You're a modern day Bette oh, Midler. Yeah. Let, me, let me make sure I'm getting it right. <clears throat> you wrote me an email where you Mark! said, Mike, it's John. There's no email. I'm a modern day Bette Midler. Do you understand me? And if you don't, I'm not coming on the podcast. <laughs> Sincerely, John Early. Why did you write that email? Um, I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> Um, but yeah, in that, in that sense, yes, I wanted to be in New York doing shows and... So and you, yeah, so you sort of saw that for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Even when you're a kid. Yeah. Sex is <laughs> real. Sex is real. Sex is something people do and you can choose to do it or not to do it. Sexually, no. <laughs> like sexually, I I thought that it was gonna be really different. <laughs> I thought I thought my life would be very different. Like I thought gayness would be really different. Oh, interesting. Like I thought, like you know, I thought romance and sex would be very different. And it's of course turned out to be its own surprising, often enjoyable thing. But when you said often enjoyable, it seemed <laughs> it seems like it never. Seems- it seems like yours a hint of irony. Yeah. Often was enjoyable. Was it because I looked directly at the camera? Um, oh, gosh. But, but, but in terms of, like, you know, art and performance and stuff. Yeah. Do, do you think you're more romantic than your partners? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. You're such a sincere person. Yeah. It's, it's can be, a, I can be a little treacly or schmaltzy or, like, you know, and and that's the Presbyterian in me. That's the like. That's like that's the, the Presbyterian in you. <laughs> <laughs> the Presbyterian. Yes. I just this just in. I just the the Presbyterian Church has made a statement. Oh no. Yeah, no. They said um, we do not stand behind John Early or any of his statements about our There's church. There's no printer. Like I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> happening but you, what do you mean by that that's the presbyterian well I, you? I think there's like a kind of protestant kind of oh uh, right oversimplified maybe kind of like right we're gonna do this the right way I'm, and i'm like cooking and you know like right um and i think that's in me and it, and it makes me rom- uh, as a romantic partner probably a little insufferable interesting and maybe sometimes enjoyable like but. you want you want things just so certain things yeah yeah i get that yeah and i don't like it it's it's a life of pain being like that is you're signing up for life of pain and just constant disappointment and it's so unfair to your partner yeah you know because it's like they're always like i have to they have to measure up to something they don't even know they don't you know you're like you have some weird narrative about how a a birthday should be or you know like or how a meal should go or how meeting the parents should. it's like and they don't share that for sure and then they're like always falling short you know it's funny because there was like an article in the times over the weekend about like the things you should never say in an argument in a relationship yeah and i was reading about it, i was like and i was like some of them i was like yeah maybe a variation on that episode maybe you know i was like pretty good on the on the on the quiz and then the one that made me laugh was um <laughs> to never say um I never said that. Oh my god! And I was like, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, because it's sort of like uh, it 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 um, nullifies what the person's concern is. Yes, and it's like legal. That one that one spun like me in court. circles though, because I was like, but what if you didn't say? Yeah, it? what what do you say if you didn't say? It? it was the only one where I was like, 
Yeah, but like, what if you didn't say it? And you then say, the person I'm sorry says you, you said felt it. like I said that. I'm sorry you <laughs> felt like I said that, <laughs> though I didn't. Yeah. But then that's or breaking you the rule. Or having not said that. <laughs> comma. Having not said that. Yeah, yeah. What's the best piece of advice anyone's given you in your life that you used? Or for that matter, like, were you ever at Tish and like you had a professor who said something where you're like, I'll never un, un I'll, I'll never forget that. Yes. I had one teacher who was like, and I do think this is like, it's like, it was like a really straightforward physical note, which is why I was receptive to it because it wasn't, it didn't feel like therapy, but I actually knew what she was saying was like very profound. And she, I was like, <laughs> she was like, John, you're like, you're always like, your neck is like always like this. Like you're like, your head is always up here. And she's like, you just have to let us see your face. Yeah. She was like, just like, put your head down, like move your chin down. And it was like, and I was like, oh, and I was like, oh my God. And like when I did, I was like, <laughs> like oh. I didn't cry, but I, but I really did feel like, oh, I am very deliberately kind of not letting people look at me. Wow. And I do think, you, you know, I, I do think that like, you just do have to let people look at you. You have right. to like let the camera like sit on your face and like let it like you just ha that's like basically what it is and that can be very hard yeah and there's and i and there's so much contemporary acting too that's like the camera because people are so used to the camera being on them now yeah that's not like like looking at a camera and like putting your image out there there's nothing that no longer costs anything yeah it's not scary for anyone yeah but like but doing that without doing this yeah you per, know, per, like, think per finger, kind of like pursing your lips and, and, like, like, and like changing your voice a little bit so it's a little down here. Yeah. Like, like that, I'm like, <clears throat> so much acting today is like, is this? And like, I'm like pushing your voice down and like, you know, I'm like, it's like, this is great, by the way. You gotta. What you're doing right now is what we want. <laughs> Can we just, we're gonna re record. <laughs> We're just gonna have you do th whatever this character is. Thank you. Oh, we'd like an hour of this. I actually do want to do that. I really, really want to do that character. Oh my but God. I, no one's giving it to us. No one's speaking or singing in their real voice anymore. No one's. It's really. It's an epidemic. Yeah. What do you think are people's favorite thing about you and least favorite thing about you? Um, favorite thing about me is probably like. You know, I have a good time. Oh my like, God. I'm funny. You know, like, I, I think I like like to bring people together. I like to, ha I, I'm a social person, I like to bring people together. Um, I think least favorite thing is probably this exact thing we were talking about of the kind of like romantic or uh, romantic or, or like a, Presbyterian. The Presbyterian thing in me that's like, the, the 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 sentimentality yes that is both that is in its in its way as i've learned over the years it's like it is kind of coercive like that is what people don't like about sentimentality it's not just a sentimentality itself it's that it's like you know it's like feel this way with me it's like you should be up here with me and it's like and it's like people are like ugh, because i hate that i hate when people do that to me that's why i like was repulsed by like church you know like right. so anyway you're making me realize in this very moment that i am guilty of that that and that's okay i think a lot of performers are I, this very rarely happens on the podcast <laughs> no i mean almost never yeah and what i'll say is i love the thing people love most about you and i love the thing people love least about you <laughs> I appreciate it as your friend. I mean, yeah. we're not, we don't see each other all the time, but I feel close to you. And I feel like I appreciate both things about you. I've been, I've been, a, I've been with you and I feel like I've witnessed both things and I think they're both wonderful. That's very nice, Mike. I have, I have compassion for it. Cause it's, it's like, it is basically like the question we all grapple with. Which is like, or or choose not to grapple with, choose to like run away from, which is like, is life meaningless or do, you know, and do I create my own meaning or is it happening to me? Like, right. you know, and that's, I think sentimentality comes from an, a desire to like, for things to be meaningful and to right. not look at the void and, you know. 
to format things into rituals yeah. and meaningful symbols. Which can be so helpful for yes. people, you know. No, completely. And also suffocating for the, those closest to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, I'm going to work. I'm going to just tell you a couple bits I'm working on. Okay. And and if you have thoughts on or, or memories or anything, if it strikes anything. And also feel free to throw in any, if you're working on anything that's sort of half-baked right now, too. Oh my God, I wish. Um, <laughs> I wish. I, I tell like a long elaborate story about my daughter going to birthday parties and how essentially like when you're, when your child is eight, you go to birthday parties like 365 days a year. And you're just like, <laughs> you're just like, she has eight friends. Yeah. Like yeah. there's some kind of fraud going on here. <laughs> I think some of these kids are claiming 20, 30 birthdays a year. <laughs> and and they're just, all oh, these kids are just so excited. Yeah. Like, everybody's just so excited about being alive, except me. And, I, and so I have to real. drive. And you really want the driver to be excited about life. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, the other half fake things I took. We, it's a. Uh, I took her to this birthday party at this place called Urban Air, which is hell. And I was, I've gone before to Urban Air, and I was just like, I'm not going in again. So Jenny went in with Una, and I, 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 I circled the block. <laughs> I have a joke in my show right now, and I don't think it's ever going to work, but uh -huh. it makes me laugh. Go, good parents take their kids to birthday parties. Great parents circle the block. <laughs> <laughs> to always be ready. Yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah, god, yeah. That's so circle good. the block. <laughs> It's like one of those things that sometimes in my shows I'll go like, you know, you might come see me in six months or a year. You go, that's funnier. That's yeah. better. And uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of times I'll be like, that joke will not be in the show. But that that's yeah. a perfect example. Yeah. Like the circle of block thing, just the metaphor doesn't complete. I don't know. I think it does have its own internal poetry. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm always chasing after, as you know. What are am I? Speaking of which, like when you were directing Jacqueline, what do you think was the most helpful note you would give consistently from that, in that show? Because I love that show so much. I think just like, I mean, it was so, it was like all her, obviously. Like directing is a bold, you know, name for me, for my title. But like um, the thing that I just think was like always reminding her to like, um, to not forget, and this is and this is just such a basic kind of theater thing. Is like not to not forget that people aren't hearing this for the first time because like yes. she is so she's has such a brilliant mind, and like and her argument is her arguments plural are so like dense and like um, intricate and like and she was very focused obviously on the, the the clarity of those arguments and i was always like well part of the clarity can just be like pretend like you're at dinner with me yes and just talk to me across the table and like explain it to me how you would explain at dinner and like i would be like you know like dumb you know and so you would like you would like really slow it down and like you'd be checking in with me to see if i'm getting it and you know so it was always like dinner just like keep it at dinner and that'll help lock you into a kind of relationship with the audience i love that know? that's great advice i Dinner. i feel like i've <laughs> i've both given that advice and received that advice yes, from my director I, always Seth to it too. Yeah, I have yeah. to hear it yeah like no it's one of those things no matter how many times you hear a piece of advice if it's as good as the advice you're saying right now and i actually would project that out to anyone who's listening to this who's a comic or a solo performer it's like remind yourself every show they have not heard the words yeah yeah they don't know the words yeah it's an entirely new concept no i know it's crazy and it makes it so much more fun yeah and i think there's like something i think jacqueline and i relate like we both are very kind of embarrassed by like the fundamental like premise of comedy sometimes yeah. of like that you have like the kind of the social contract is that you have to kind of say it as if you're saying it for the first time and your eyes have to dart up to your memory and or like you pull words from even though you know what the word is yeah you still have to kind of perform like you're like kind of figuring it out and like yeah it's and, and there's something i think we both are like so like ew but then it's like well then the other then what what are you without that like yes. without that device of like working through it for the first time you're like 
completely figured out and like right. what you're like a performance artist who's like saying words you know it's like it's it's so generous to be it's so much more generous to pretend to be conversational and intimate with an audience than it is to do some sort of strange thing where it's already figured out right you know i don't know where but, you're like presenting your thesis yeah 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 totally i brought you here today yeah to convince you of one thing yeah um we and then this is the other one is um <clears throat> so jenny and i for our daughter's sixth birthday we asked her we go what would be like your favorite thing that we could do for your birthday and she said i want you and mom to dress up like clowns that's so, so sweet so jenny and i went to a costume shop we got the full makeup we got full outfits we woke her up on her birthday we said happy birthday you know? <laughs> she started crying no Oh, no, no. <laughs> and I think she still thought she was in a dream. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we were just like, no, we just, uh, no, it's us. You know, and then, we, and then we're just like, we're so sorry. What's yeah, wrong? Yeah. She goes, when I said you should dress up as clowns, I meant that I would walk you around town and people would laugh at you. Oh, and that's when I realized. Like sadistic that, little girl. That's when I realized that she wanted to be my manager. She wanted to make 10% on top of 100%. <laughs> well, this has to go on the show. I love this. Jenny literally said the other day, because she was listening to the show, she goes like, it's almost like the, t the title of the show should have something to do with clowns. Yeah. Because it, it's like a, there's something metaphoric about the way in which we try to please the people who we love mm -hmm. and and w in the process we're clowns uh, yeah uh the last thing we do is working out for a cause is there an organization you like to donate to i will donate to them i will con i will link to them in the show notes and encourage others to donate as well I would like to choose. <laughs> Why the voice? Why the voice? <laughs> because because I just do want to let the audience in on my search for the actual name of this place. Um, which is what the... What search? There was a search. <laughs> we took a break to search. <laughs> the National <laughs> Nurses United. <laughs> the largest nurses union in the country. Okay. Um, and I, and I, and you know, I, I don't, we all in 2016 got very charity pilled, you know, it was very like, here's the, this is the thing that you can donate to. And I, and I think giving to unions is a, is a smart way to make sure your money is getting used directly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I will, um, I will contribute to national nurses United. I will link to them in the show notes, John early. I, uh, fee, I never say this. I don't think I've ever said this. I feel like I have a lot of thinking to do. <gasps> I think a lot of thinking and reflecting. I'm honored. It was a very deep conversation. Thank you so much for, for being here. And, Thank you. And I urge people to watch your special. It's one of a kind. Mm -hmm.